My name is Dr. Robert Levine. I'm a professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School and a member of the cardiac division at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. I just uh, gave a talk at the 23rd International Academy of Cardiology annual scientific sessions in Boston uh, on a new approach to heart valve disease prevention or intervention. And we all know that uh, heart valve disease is an exciting area in uh, modern cardiology. Major advances in surgical and percutaneous interventions. The challenge is, can we understand the mechanisms of valve disease in a way we can actually prevent them from occurring and keep patients and their hearts healthy? So this requires understanding the mechanisms and being able to image to detect them early so that we can prevent. So this is a great dream. We've begun to apply this approach based on funding from the, the Duke Foundation of a transatlantic international network that bridged basic and clinical scientists to really ask these mechanistic questions. And that, that was in several areas, in mitral valve prolapse or degenerative mitral valve disease. We were able to find the first genes for non-syndromic mitral valve prolapse. The first one disorganizing the cells in the valve in a way that probably alters their behavior uh, that eventually leads to valve degeneration uh, many years later. Uh, then a, in a large genome-wide association study, we were able to find a number of other targets that affect the ability of valve cells to have normal structure and to build normal valves. So our challenge in that area is to say, how do we go from mutation to disease and where can we intervene? Are there nodal points where we can treat and prevent the disease? In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the valve is long, a uh, number of uh, basic investigators and developmental biologists are discovering that the long valve may be related to paracrine influences coming from the cells within the disorganized myocardial wall. And again, if we could block that and prevent it early on, we might obviate the need for other interventions, be able to prevent left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So there's great hope in that regard. Mechanisms to treatment. And finally, in ischemic mitral regurgitation after myocardial infarction, it's a great cause of magnifying heart failure. Mortality is doubled, heart failure is doubled. And it seems to be a mismatch between the size of the valve and the size of the remodeling or expanding left ventricle. And we know that the valve is under stretch, and we know that body structures expand when they're stretched. So does the valve grow? And the answer is it does. It's larger in patients with ischemic MR, and the larger the valve, the less the MR, but there's great variability among individuals. It turns out that if you just stretch the valve, the valve will grow by reactivating embryonic growth processes. But in the infarction state, a huge number of other changes occur that lead to valve shortening, fibrosis, and stiffening, preventing normal closure, and increasing mitral regurgitation. And we've begun to address those pharmacologically. Also, we've learned that this is not just an epiphenomenon, but causes changes in the normally perfused myocardium at a basic cellular and molecular level, work from Ronan Be'eri in Jerusalem and Raja Hajar at Mount Sinai. So I think the summary of all of these projects is that there are mechanisms that cause valve disease to progress and also affect the myocardium that's volume overloaded, that by understanding these mechanisms through clinical and basic interactions, we have a chance of preventing them and thereby improving outcomes, improving, reducing the load on the myocardium and reducing the associated heart failure and mortality.